a group of partners, we all decided to give up a successful executive career and come together to build this firm. It was a modest beginning, born together by a common theme to build a firm of the future, a firm that differentiates from peers, a firm which would be passionate about client service, and it will provide solutions to clients. If you give this great technical advice with two other qualities, one, you understand the business of the organization, and two, you're creative in your solutions to clients, and you're solution-driven, that's what makes it as a complete package. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, I'm thankful to you on behalf of ASPAR Advisors for sparing your valuable time and inspiring today's professional by sharing an illustrative professional journey, building your own brand. So I'm really impressed that you have created your own brand with your own name. Thank you very much, Arjit, for having me on your show. Uh, brands are created over a period of time. I can merely attribute it to, as we say, right person at the right time. I had never dreamt of uh, leave alone becoming, uh, getting a rank in my CA. I had never dreamt of becoming a chartered accountant. My only dream at that point in time was to play cricket for the nation. And as a result of which I was told that either I should take up a job as an inspector in the income tax department or appear for State Bank of India probationary's test to become an officer. Because in those days, these two were the gateways for playing cricket in Mumbai. And then suddenly this thought came up, why not try your hand at appearing for your CA entrance exams? And that was really it. But I think the most important thing was that rank holders, if I may say so, were treated a little differently in those days. They were discriminated. They used to get letters of offer even in those days when there were hardly any multinationals in the country they used to get a walk-in interview and my first walk-in interview with arthur anderson landed me with the job which was not just the first job also the last job and just before turning 40 i realized that it's one life let's do something different now there are advantages and disadvantages of achieving senior leadership responsibility at a young age, which I got it when I was in my 30s. As a result of which, we want to do something different in life. What is it that you can be doing different? Become an entrepreneur. That's where the journey of BMR with my other partners started. So I would say I was and I am very lucky. Yes, I really impressed uh, with the this BMR uh, rising stars like that. So uh, most of my second question uh, you have already covered, but then also, as I understood, you was the youngest as being 31 year old only who assumed, assumed responsibility as worldwide partner Arthur Anderson. Please share a few points of your learning viewpoints during your professional journey so far from beginning to deal in brief, which can be helpful and also inspire other professionals. So, what was your learning experience now and what did you understand? My learning experiences in the earlier days uh, were many. Uh, I think my first job uh, gave me the ability to, uh, before, you, before you think about giving technical advice uh, to a client, uh, you need to understand uh, the business of the client. And that I felt was, was, was made a lot of difference uh, to my thinking. So you put your technical hat on and you take into consideration the business of the organization so that you are seen as giving a workable, practical solution. Uh, businesses and clients are not interested in technical advice. Uh, they are interested in what is it that is workable within the four corners of the law. And if there are any risks associated with it, then is it defendable successfully? So I think this is really uh, my uh, first uh, lesson. 
I think I was also very fortunate and lucky to have uh, been surrounded by a group of people who are my peers, who are my superiors, and who are my mentors. I learned a lot from them. Uh, one thing that I missed after becoming an entrepreneur was not having someone above me. Uh, our profession, and for that matter, any profession, is such that you always remain a student. which means that you should have a guru uh, so now you resort to external uh, mentorship i do often go and talk to few people who i have admired and respected over the years and seek mentorship i think in my view uh, if these are the few qualities that professionals ingrain in themselves they can never go wrong my third uh, attribute is my hunger and desire to learn uh, even at this age uh, and that goes back again to the philosophy of being a student it is only if you are a student that you want to learn more and your curiosity goes up and you will never get to a stage where you will say well i know it all uh, i encourage my younger professionals to uh, speak uh, i run uh, a boutique law firm where uh, you know 80% of my associates uh, are between the age of 23 and 27 and one thing i tell them is that uh, when you sit with me whether to brief me whether to you know get your work product re- uh, you know reviewed by me uh, don't hesitate to speak up uh, and talk about it uh, so i think you know and and that again strikes to the very issue of learning because if you are a student then you can learn even from your juniors as well because they are more well read uh, they have done better research and they can come out with ideas that your old brain can't think of so i think these are some of the attributes uh, i have tried to embrace thank you so much sir so the next question is as per my limited knowledge bmr is the only firm in india who is featured in harvard and ibm I am Bangalore as a case study on the topic competing to on quality to whom you uh, to whom would you give credit of your illustrious success and who are your role models Firstly uh, Arjit this is not my success the firm that you are referring to BMR advisors in 2017 that firm got transitioned Yes that's correct uh, we are possibly the only professional services firm that featured in the case study It's interesting that you talk about the case study. I am Bangalore uh, approached us uh, for doing this case study. Uh, it first took us by surprise. Uh, why do they want to do the case study? Uh, they explained the reasons to us. Uh, I think uh, this case study uh, is still taught uh, in IIMs and uh, many uh, US universities. It's unique. I always pick up that document and look at it. i think there were many attributes that contributed if you go through the details of the case study as i remember it's a 2016 uh, case study yes. uh, it talks about uh, one the core values of the firm uh, and do the partners the founders of the firm uh, do consistently practice those core values of integrity passion for excellence uh, personal growth uh you know looking at all stakeholder interest which is the tax administration tax payers and responsibility towards the tax fraternity uh so consistently practicing those core values are very critical uh the credit goes not uh to the leader or leaders or founders the credit goes in my view to the entire partnership uh, that practiced uh, those core values the second most important thing is building strong resilient uh, client service teams uh, there's a lot of talent available in the market the challenge is identifying that talent and the challenge starts after you identify the talent which is how do you groom that talent how do you actually make that talent respond to challenging client needs i think that is where leaders and partners have to play a very important role the third aspect is how much investment do you make in training and developing people 
in building knowledge platforms that not just help you serve your clients effectively but also make you a knowledge powerhouse you already served three decades in this profession how ca qualification helped in managing and maintaining the glory of your professional life arjit first i wanted to add that though for the last 12 years i am practicing uh, as an advocate uh, i owe a major part of what i am today to my ca qualification and let me explain to you uh, that the transition from ca to being a lawyer wasn't easy whenever i uh, goof up uh, as a lawyer i tell everyone don't consider me as someone in the profession for 30 plus years but consider me as a lawyer with 10 years of experience and a 10 years of experience as a lawyer is not that great there are lawyers with 30 40 50 years of experience i think ca qualification in my view helps you strengthen the fundamentals not just fundamentals in terms of tax accounting financial management or costing the subjects that were part of an academic curriculum but it helps you uh give more attention to details uh it helps you analyze things uh like businesses do it helps you put the business thinking hat right from your student days and i think in my view it gives you a overall perspective uh, in the world of economics and finance now if you then start practicing uh, in your professional capacity depending on the nature of your practice whether you're dealing with mid size small size startups multinational it forces you to apply that knowledge thinking and attention to details on a day in day out basis in my view that makes you even better and better coming to the uh, legal profession uh, uh, you know many people uh, tell me now in my capacity as a lawyer people who don't know my background uh, feel that i think very differently as a lawyer and when i tell them about my background that i practiced for first 24 years of my career as a chartered accountant they say wow no wonder you know all of these accounting principles and all of these Uh, you know financial ratios uh, you know they come to you automatically and they come to you naturally so i think there is clearly an inherent advantage uh, for a lawyer who's practiced as a chartered accountant and i use the word practice because there are many lawyers who are qualified as chartered accountants the uh, second advantage uh, obviously is that uh, when i went for my first and last job uh i had the opportunity to work with a firm which doesn't exist anymore arthur anderson and anderson was the only big four or in those days big eight uh, which practiced as an international firm rest of the firms in those days which are in the current avatar the big four today uh, practice merely as franchises and uh, licenses Uh, Anderson was the only global firm uh, that was there in India at that point in time, and that structure gave an ability to everyone who worked in the firm uh, to be world class. Uh, you know, whether you are an associate in Mumbai office or you are in New York or London or Tokyo, the quality of training that was imparted to you, uh, the uh the the competencies that were required were consistent you know it was like uh you know whether you're a mckinsey consultant in mumbai or in new york same thing same uh, standards are applied uh and that also was a competitive edge for many people who worked in arthur anderson uh the other uh, aspect was uh, the worldwide partnership uh in anderson uh you know everyone aspired to be uh, becoming a worldwide partner and the entire process of how the candidates were tested on their skills how they made it to national partners and how after national partners there was oversight by 
the worldwide organization partners uh, to assess whether the individual is capable of becoming a worldwide partners or not made that firm as a very unique firm so i would say that uh, those early days of grooming um, were there and they contributed a lot to me um, which many people today will admit that they never had an opportunity to work in that firm and hence they couldn't be groomed in that manner remember one thing talent is always groomed it is it it is an assumption that we have to make that everyone uh, is intelligent and is capable but the question is how do you hone those skills how do you leverage on those skills for that you need an enabling environment which i just described and i was very fortunate and lucky to have that enabling environment that's really impressive so the sir next question is today uh as i understand you are chairing international fistal association for india over a long period of time what is the role of international fistal association in india and overseas and how it is different from chamber of commerce like fikki escoms etc efa or international fiscal association i have had a long long uh, innings uh, it dates back uh, almost 27 years back um this was uh, a introduction made to me by the then chair of efa late mr op vesh senior advocate uh india was hosting the congress in 1997 and in order for india to host the congress i just happened to be attending the congress preceding the 1997 congress which was in uh, geneva and that gave me an insight into the larger efa organization well efa is the largest non governmental independent international tax research organization with memberships spanning across 50 countries uh, india is one of the major uh, contributors uh, to the global organization of efa uh, it brings together tax practitioners who have a flair for international tax and in my view given all that we see around us in the past 10 years and what we will see probably for the next 10 years in the area of international tax is very very fascinating and interesting uh, how is is efa different well efa is not a business chamber so efa does not uh, you know make any representations or does any advocacy Uh, with the government to influence policy instead efa is called upon by governments efa is called upon by multilateral agencies such as the un or the oecd uh, efa is called upon by business chambers of commerce to contribute uh, to the vast area of international tax research so that's the biggest difference between efa uh, and a chamber of commerce uh we hold congresses uh these congresses uh, require phenomenal uh, preparation of the technical agenda which is called the scientific uh, agenda and many conferences and it is attended spoken of ifa also brings together on one platform all stakeholder views so that is what makes it different from business uh businesses normally project what the business point of view is efa brings tax administrators tax payers tax practitioners tax activists uh, multilateral agencies and governments uh, so it's a common non partisan platform on international tax research it's very different than a chamber of commerce thank you so the my next question is and which is my favorite question and i ask it with everyone according to you what should a professional do so that he can be a leader or a brand in future most of the times we find ourselves working for others and building for them what one can do right now so that he can say after 15 20 years down the line that he has made his own brand like one can be called by his name not by likely by any organization if employed so the this question is really uh, suitable and perfect with uh, your journey so you have created your own brand and uh, 
and it really inspires everyone you know it's a difficult question but let me try and uh, answer that uh, i think all of us as professionals have been given a platform to be either self employed or to employ ourselves but whether you are self employed or you are employed uh, the very profession uh, whether you are an engineer doctor lawyer or a chartered accountant gives you the ability to think independently so i think independence of thinking uh, in my view helps you build a brand um i also feel that uh, most professionals take up job because for the sake of taking up a job they don't take up a job to chase their dreams uh, chasing your dream uh, is in my view very critical uh, and chasing your dream relentlessly uh, is important i'm reminded of a very nice quote uh, that uh, us senator elizabeth warren uh, uh, you know spoke about in the in last week's uh, harvard law school uh, you know uh, graduation ceremony it says don't spend your life doing things that don't move your soul so if you spend your life doing things that move your soul uh it will certainly help uh these are not generalities uh this is something that you need to practice every day i have always believed that i want to chase my dream um i do recall at the age of 39 when i told my wife that i'm giving up a job to become an entrepreneur and uh, she said but you know why would you do that uh, i was just you know just a little over 7 years into my marriage at that point in time and uh, she could really see the advantage of uh, marrying someone uh, who is in a leadership position i became a partner even before i got married uh, you know all the perks associated with uh, working in a large organization first class travel uh, staying in the best hotels uh, you know overseas travel you know you name it you know you, you have everything and she asked me why will i give up that i said well i just wanted to try becoming an entrepreneur because i think somewhere at the back of my mind i had a dream and i wanted to chase it and um, same thing happened when i uh, decided at the age of 45 that uh, i want to switch over from practicing as a chartered accountant to practicing as a lawyer and at that point in time my wife said you know i think you are going through a serious midlife crisis uh, to think doing that because for all these years people recognized you as a qualified competent chartered accountant uh i did that again because somewhere you know it was a dream for me i wanted to chase that which i'm chasing right now as a lawyer so i think that uh, there are no uh, hard and fast rules about how you build a brand uh, i think it's a combination of what Uh, ca and lawyer as a qualification gives you to think independently that helps you build a brand and of course the basics are the basics of hard work and commitment are there because without hard work and commitment your luck can take you only so far <laughs> even if you're lucky yeah. so i would say that uh, i put most stress on commitment to a cause uh, as an important instrumentality to build a brand that's a really easy so my last question which is very important for young professionals at last what advice would you like to give to finance professionals referring to your enriched experience seeing of corporate and practice lives very closely and also what are the do's and don'ts they have to keep in mind as a checklist while doing work in their initial years at least and also after reaching certain heights सो so, क्या होता है कोई भी प्रोफेशनल स्टार्टिंग फेज पे जब लग जाते हैं ना तो उसको मतलब अपनी इमेज बनाने से ज्यादा पैकेज पे ध्यान फोकस बहुत रहता है कि भाई एक साल के बाद जॉब चेंज कर दे छह साल छह महीने के बाद चेंज कर दे तो मतलब ऐसे वो क्या करें स्टार्टिंग में जैसे आप फ्रेशर हैं तो आप अगर प्रैक्टिस करना चाहते हैं तो ऐसा क्या करें कि आपकी प्रैक्टिस ग्रूम हो 
और बूस्ट हो और जब आप हाइट्स पे पहुंच जाए तो ऐसे क्या प्रिकॉशंस लें कि वो प्रैक्टिस को मेंटेन रखें से आई कम फ्रॉम एन ओल्ड स्कूल ऑफ थॉट आई कम फ्रॉम अ बैकग्राउंड वेयर चेंजिंग अ जॉब वॉज कंसिडर्ड मोर एज एन आउटलायर but that that was different era uh, i don't think it's fair to compare that era to this era where the opportunities are multifold um but i also equally feel that uh, in our profession uh, what used to be an underpaid uh, class of uh, citizens um uh, has turned out to be now very decently and sometimes overly paid profession uh as you correctly pointed out the major contributor for change in job is uh salary uh compensation um i think that is where the younger generation needs to be careful about that if you keep on switching jobs just for the sake of earning higher salary then where is it going to end uh, i think you need to look at uh, what kind of organizations are you working with uh, what kind of values does that organization espouse what kind of learnings are you getting in your job so in my view the growth for any younger professional is a combination of many factors including compensation yes compensation is very important it may be easy for me uh, given uh, my uh, situation to talk about it uh, but i never hesitate in telling people that i got my first maruti 800 car uh, when i was a senior manager just about to make it to a partner i owned a house when you know i was 5 years into my marriage in the late 30s so i think that somewhere the younger professionals have to temper their expectations of money and instead focus on what kind of organization am i working for uh, what are the values of those organizations what is my learning uh, and what is my growth potential um to your question self employed versus being employed in a large organization well uh, you look at any profession if you are self employed you are going to start small uh the quality of work may not be comparable to the work that you will get working in a large organization so you have to make compromises there uh, uh you know you can't suddenly compare yourself i feel over the years self employed chartered accountants have been either disillusioned or have given up the concept of being self employed and practicing on their own i think the avenues for chartered accountants are immense i mean just look at the uh, startup ecosystem in a country just look at the growth of small and medium enterprises in a country so it's one thing to say that serving large conglomerates and serving large multinationals may be the prerogative of large firms or people employed in large firms but there is a whole ecosystem outside of the large conglomerates and multinationals who require hand holding who require seamless service who require in my view multidisciplinary skills accounting finance tax treasury business management arbitration and that is an area which is a possibility for self employed chartered accountants or people who work in small and mid sized firms so i think that the younger generation have to embrace the concept of becoming entrepreneurs and in their pursuit to become entrepreneurs there would be years in which they may want to compare themselves with their peers and accept it that they will not be able to make that much money initially in my view the entire profession of ca which used to be more recognized as self employed has moved completely the pendulum has swung completely on the other side most of them are employed because either they are disillusioned or they see no opportunities for themselves 
the ca profession is spread throughout the country and it's not that the self employed ca does not have opportunities in large cities of course it has but here is where the younger generation has to temper their expectations and and look at the big picture and look at the long term rather than uh, you know succumbing and taking up a job i'm not saying that they should not take up a job they should if they want to there are there are family pressures for people to start earning but somewhere they have to think of being self employed okay and uh, at last anything which you want to convey or say anything which i missed out in any part of my question well i would again maybe repeat what some of the things that i mentioned uh, i would say keep up your curiosity levels for earnings uh, you are a student and you will always remain one uh, i do recall uh, my first day of articles when my principal told me you are entering a profession which is very demanding it is demanding on you your time family sacrifices don't give up the habit of reading and learning i still have those lessons with me and that's the only thing that i would say uh second believe in believe in sharing knowledge believe in uh, contributing to the society believe in giving up something this is more for people who have attained heights i see many many senior professionals who are more worried about their next bonus who are more worried about the chargeable hours that they will deliver to the organization by way of revenues and running around to meet targets but they should contribute to what the profession has given them by grooming younger professionals by mentoring them by talking to them i think that in my view is missing a lot and that is my biggest criticism against many of my peers in the profession thank you so much so thank you so much sir for giving your precious time uh, answering all your questions uh, well i really enjoyed it a lot and i strongly believe that your interview will inspire many professionals especially young professionals thank you arjit uh, for your time and uh, i'm glad that despite all the hiccups we could make it happen <laughs> it's all about your your okay. blessing only thank you so thank much thank you for reaching out to me stay blessed thank you sir thank you sir bye 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 sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you properly. I can't hear you. No, 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 no. I can't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you properly. Sir. Okay, now it's perfect. Perfect. चलिए सर तो मुहूर्त निकल ही गया फिर finally.